Welcome to Switch It Up. I have a haircut. <laughs> Today, we're gonna talk about something interesting and, and I didn't know this existed until recently because of some things that were happening. It's called frame flexing. Who knew it was a thing? But as things kind of develop through the course, Sheila, you notice some stuff up front. Well, you know, we'd always talked about the sawdust fairy. Yeah. And but then as I when I was cleaning, you know, you always see sawdust, whatever, but I started noticing like areas where things were like it looked like it was just rubbing. Right. And then also even just areas where I'm like, hey, this seems like it's separating a, a it's little just bit. Diff just it, something's it, off. Yeah. And so we started doing some research on frame flexing. So we're going to talk about that and this lovely new hairdo and why I got my hair cut. And I did shoot footage of that as well. So let's jump into the intro and we'll come back and fill you in a little bit. A man and a woman left their home to switch things up and go on the road. They didn't know where they would go, but it's got to be better than staying home. And we're back. I like coming from the wonderful uh, intro song into doing what we're doing. It's like, it's like a time warp. It took us that whole time to move all the way to the kitchen. Yeah. And this is our lovely refrigerator. It is. That people ask, you know, why, in some of our videos, you asked about like, why do we have lithium batteries? Why don't you just switch over to propane? As you can see, we have a Samsung refrigerator. So that wasn't the case. And that's why the lithium batteries are such a big deal. But I digress. But, yeah, that's not what we're here to talk about. No, we're talking about noticing things as like this. We're coming up on our second year of traveling. And you start noticing things getting out of place, especially if you've been in an RV for a long period of time living full time. And one of the things that every single time we pull this slide in, we started noticing was right up here. What did you notice? This was... Well, I just started noticing like a, a fine powder. Like it was right. different than sawdust. And I realized that it's because the... The refrigerator when that when that slide comes in it is touching that piece of trim and then it's just rubbing and so this whole slide when it comes in the refrigerator dips over and I think it's just because of the weight now this has nothing to do with frame flexing but it does have to do with noticing stuff as you're living and going through this I think routine. you have to pay attention to little things like that because you just don't know. Every little thing could be an indicator of a bigger problem. Right. So you just have to pay attention. This is not an indicator of a bigger problem. It's just just the way it is. Right. But it is something like when we're traveling now, you put stuff in here to try to limit the, yes. the movement. Because it could actually damage the cabinet. Well, it has so, damaged the cabinet. And in this case... It's kind of worn in. Rubbing and racing doesn't work it doesn't work in an RV I only tow 65 so it's not like I'm racing down the road but it right. does get with this this gives you the example of the eyes you use to start looking to see certain things and then she started noticing when we were setting up hey did you see this and you want to show them what yeah that... up in the up in the bedroom in the front mm -hmm. overhang part which it's then really open this door of starting the panic mode in my head about frame flexing so yeah, you know I've got some paranoia issues. Just a little. I'll All show right. you up here. <laughs> Alright, some of the things that I started to notice when I was making the bed especially is see how like the, the cabinetry has started to wear. Like it's just rubbing obviously on these pieces. On um, both sides. On both sides. So there's something happening. So I immediately was like is the frame broken you know i went to just negative nancy world right away you did and you really freaked me out because <laughs> we're without our truck right now so then <laughs> you started talking about the 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 frames broken there's a crack in well, the frame i didn't say it like that i said there could be is this something that could be so if you're going to be living this life for a long period of time things move and shift a lot and we were on some just not so great roads for we, quite a while. We have been on some rough roads lately. And then I was thinking, oh my gosh, if the frame's broken, we're going to be without our rig for months. Yeah. I hooked up a GoPro. And the first thing I did was as we were traveling down the road and I wanted to see how bad it was. And as, you know, we play that footage, we'll go out and talk about some of the things I discovered through the course of this. 
But then I realized a lot of this has come down to just some really horrific roads. And it's not as bad as I thought it was. So you, I guess stay calm. Don't freak out when you start noticing these types of things. Yeah, yes, I think that that's probably the number one key in RVing is just stay calm. Don't panic. It's all fixable. It is all fixable. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump out and share with you guys what I discovered through the course of this. And then we'll wrap up and with Sheila and get her final thoughts. It's fun I, stuff. I have a lot of final thoughts. Well, I know you do. <laughs> Right now we're mooch docking at a friend of ours house. If you've seen some of the other videos that we've done, um, that's Mike's garage that he does all of his little um, projects in, which is really pretty cool. Now, I my goal here is not to scare anyone. My goal here is not to provide all the answers. My goal is just to simply bring awareness to something that I think a lot of us are unaware of because I didn't know about this until I started noticing some certain signs. Number one, we do have a Reese, and the benefit of the Reese is remember it does have an airbag and it has two shocks on it. And that means when we're traveling down the road, it's absorbing a lot of the bad road contact that you generally get from, you know, just there's some highways that are absolutely horrific as you're traveling. And although it can handle a lot of that, there's been some times that when we're cruising at 65 miles an hour, that you can feel the whole weight come into the bed of the truck. Well, all that weight has to transfer somewhere from the RV. And so that'll generally reverberate up through your whole system here into the frame. And on the frame, on the 395 and a lot of them, we'll have two major components coming across here. And then you'll have your major beam coming here. And then from here, the beam comes down and then you start making the transverse across the bottom. So knowing this, I was thinking if any of the welds have broken up here, this could be the reason we might be having a lot of the shifting and the moving movement up here in the bedrooms. So this is Sheila's side of the bed. As you can see where it's at located here, all of that movement and all that pressure, when it's compounded right into here, you're getting all of the movement right in the same section. So what I decided to do, which I did not shoot any video on because I was, when you get into that, like that panic mode of trying to figure some stuff out, you just jump into action. So I literally spent, you can see all this is new silicone now. I pulled off the whole underbelly through here up until here. I did not pull off from, I didn't, I didn't pull the whole door off and all that. I just got this all the way back down so then I can check every single weld that's under here in all the corners. And I do have pictures of all that. And then I was discovering, I was able to, when we purchased our Grand Design Momentum, we did a, a factory tour. And the good thing about shooting video is that I shot video of the factory tour. I was able to capture pictures and some video, short little video clips. And I wish now looking back at it, if you get to do a factory tour, shoot a lot of pictures and videos of just like your frame of the unit that you're having being built, if you get the chance. And that way I was able to look back at that footage and learn right through here is where the main beam comes down. And then you have two metal wings that come out from there for support. So I was able to see and follow that transfer of the main beam down to the main eye beam that runs across and then from there I cleaned out everything from the storage and I was able to crawl all the way back through here lay on my belly and check every single weld from that point forward all the way back and how I did that was is after I pulled the underbelly off I hooked everything back up to, to the truck and had all the weight go back into the truck to see if there was any broken welds, if they would break open because now you have it under pressure. Then I've learned that you have about, from your frame flex from here, you're looking for maybe a quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch is acceptable from the flex uh, when the weight is supported into the truck. And we're in that quarter inch range. So that's what was, peace of mind knowing, okay, 
it isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was a concern when I saw the rubbing. And I, you know, it's like when you're going to, when you feel like you're sick and you're going to go to the doctor, you go into the doctor and they run all the tests and then, and then you start running in your head because you're Googling all of this stuff, like what this false positive is going to be or whatever. That's kind of like this. I kind of told myself a story, was freaking out going, if this is the case, here's the ramifications. We'd have to take this thing up to Elkhart. We're going to be sidelined for however long. And most of the time when you're running across the stories on this, you're going to run across the stories of they had to go in, there was broken welds, they have to re-weld things. But the idea of, well, if that's the case, you're going to trade in your RV and you're going to get something new, that does, that's not the case. What Grand Design or whoever your manufacturer is, what they'll do is, is that they'll call Lippert. Lippert will send out an, uh, basically a, a person to inspect the frame but Lippert will not remove anything off of your RV, meaning that you'll have to take everything off for them to inspect the frame. If there is damage, you'll either A, that specialist may actually be able to weld everything that might be broken at the time there, or you'll have to find a shop, but in any case, you'll have to put everything back together. So it is a pain in the butt, and it is it will sideline a lot of people and I don't think anyone's really talking about it. I couldn't find too many videos on it. I've heard, seen a lot of people complaining about frame flexing and broken frames and broken welds and stuff. And quite honestly, I'm so happy that I have the Reese to maybe limit a lot of that jostling. And so what I did then is, is I put GoPros into the bedroom and shot video of us traveling down the road and caught we were on some decent roads on, in comparison to where we've been on some bad ones. These roads were pretty decent. We didn't have any major movement, so it really gave me peace of mind. I didn't find any broken welds. Everything looks great. I was able to inspect all of that, take pictures of everything, and then I was able to put it back together and then shoot video. So I have peace of mind knowing that it was really, it's just been some really, really bad roads in Colorado. Um, a couple of them in Utah were not too shabby. So that's kind of how that sits. Now you're sitting there going, okay, you have all these questions. I've opened a box of worms. Like you could have, you know, a problem, a major problem. And we have some friends that have a major problem right now with their frame broken. And it's really sidelined them a lot. And it's because they have where everything comes down through here. Well, a lot of times you'll start getting the stress cracks and things like that. So yeah, there's, there's things you need to be aware of, but just be cautious and, and just be uh, observant. Now, not everyone's going to be traveling like we have. We've literally put 30,000 miles on our RV within 22 months. And that's way more than most people will travel in the whole ownership of their RV in a lot of cases. So it's just things that we've learned along our journeys. And I thought I want to share that with you today that you can look into it more on your own. And again, I'm sorry I don't have all the answers. I do have some peace of mind after doing that. And I totally appreciate being able to at least share that with you. RV life's fun. There it is, even in the challenges. Now you're asking yourself, what's with, with the hair? Listen, I was so blessed and blown away by so many people that donated for on our live close to, I think, $27 to $2,800 for Hurricane Ian efforts and relief. That yeah, I went and got my hair cut, and I appreciate that. So, but I I went ahead and took a camera. So I thought I'd share that with you real quick, and then we'll run in and see what Sheila has to say. <laughs> it's that time, time to pay the piper. Hey guys, it's time to get the hair cut. I made it. Okay, so this is Melanie. She's gonna make me look pretty, aren't you? Yes. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I think this mullet idea might be one of the best ones yet. I think Sheila would be, she'd be very impressed. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, just wear a ball cap and just mullet it. Yeah. My son's got a mullet, so it's in Oh right my now. goodness, mullets are in. <laughs> mullets are in. Yeah, it would drive you guys crazy. There it is, Melanie. Hope you guys like it. Oh, she put me back into shape. Look at this. That's not so shabby. I'm humid again. All right, Sheila and the boys are waiting for me. We're gonna go eat breakfast. Oh, they're laughing. 
Why are they laughing? Where did Red Pig go? <laughs> what? Where did Red Pig go? I'm right here, bro. <laughs> Got some new shorter hair working there. What do you think? I think it's gonna take a hot minute. I was used to the long hair and now it's short. What do you short. think? Do you like my hair? Not as much as the red pig. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, you're back. Yes. Just, I was going over everything with them about just like staying calm and all that fun stuff. And it's, you know, it's important in this world. But I also appreciate you wanting to dig into something, check it out, mm. see if there's really something broken because it could be catastrophic mm -hmm. going down the road if it is worse than than, than anticipate. Than, than I think it is. So we have a lot of peace of mind right now. We're pretty happy with that. We are going to keep track of everything and watch it and all that fun stuff. People are going to be asking right now, so what does Sheila think of Todd's hair? After I shared with them the haircut. haircut. <laughs> so what do you think of the haircut? Well, I was kind of getting used to the long hair. So the long hair didn't bother me. It, it was when you're constantly rubbing your hands through your hair, then that long hair just like kind of took disheveled. over. Disheveled. Remember um, that movie Back to the Future uh -huh. when we were kids? Uh -huh. He had like this dock hair going on. Yeah. Yeah. So I like this better. It when you you can't run your hands through it so much. So. So that's that's the benefit. I think this is a benefit. And I know a lot of you are happy that I finally cut my hair and. I appreciate all the donations that went in to help all the hurricane relief stuff. So yeah, there you go. You mean you can always There's grow the it update. out again? I can always grow it out. Right now it's I think it's hair. a little short on the top and I think I want to grow this part longer. Speaking of hair, I have a hair appointment because we're, it's, so it's my turn oh, now. Yeah. Life on the road is yeah. hard to get your, especially ladies getting your cuts and colors and your dyes and all that fun stuff. It's hard to What's do. What's the difference between a color and a dye? I don't know. Oh, okay. I thought there was. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to go get a new haircut okay. and a new hair color. And Yeah. And you should like, comment, subscribe on this video if it's been of any value to you whatsoever, which I have no idea. So, but we appreciate you watching. Frame flexing. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew Who it was knew? a thing? And I'm sure you guys are going to leave comments of some bad horror stories that didn't turn out so well for you so far. And this is just an ongoing thing that we are now noticing. So thanks for tuning in. We truly appreciate it. And that's pretty much it. Yes, we'll see you next time.